Hi guys, how are you all? So I am Asit Sek from Iconic Design and I will be your tutor for this class. And in this video we are going to see how to implement data visualization in WordPress using Graphina. It's going to be super easy and highly useful. So throughout this course we will make the same dashboard using interesting and useful features of Graphina and we will explore it throughout the course. And if you like this dashboard and you want the same kind of infographic pages and dashboard you can get our amazing and one and only theme Numetric which is based on WordPress dashboard reporting and infographic theme. Now coming back to Graphina, we are going to make use of various charts like mix, line, column, column stake and much more. And we are also going to see counters and data tables in Graphina. So we are going to use the manual data for this video as we are more focusing on how to use Graphina but stay connected with us. In coming videos, we will use the dynamic data for creating chart. As we talk about the benefits of data visualization in Graphina, let's start this video without any delays. So as we open this in Elementor page and on the left side, we can see all the widgets Graphina offers. And now we will make a similar page to this dashboard. And we can see the first element is counters. So we'll start with them. We will create the section on the page and then search for the counters and drag it within the page section. This is how simple it is. In the similar way, you can add more charts, counters and data table in the page. On the left side, we have a counter data option and here we have similar features to make our counter more appealing. The first feature is counter layout. We have six different car layouts and you can change it from drop down and see the change. We will select layout 2 as it will match perfectly with the dashboard we are going to make and below that we have option for data type that is manual or dynamic and we are going to use the manual data for this video and we will use dynamic data for another video. So stay connected with me and subscribe to our channel for further notice. Then we have option for hash chart that enables and disables the chart in the counter. Like we can see here, you can see it's a very beautiful chart. Mm. And we also have an option to use chart data that will use chart data in counter. Now we have the head option, title. Here you can add the name of the counter that you want. For now, I will keep it counter and I am removing it as we don't need it for now in counters and below that I am giving the description then we have the restriction content access that topic is for another video so we will continue that in some different videos so continue with this now jump to the counter settings here we can set where to start our counter from for example, I will put 20 and we can set our counter to starting from 20. Then we have option for end at and it will stop the counter at that selective value. For example, I am setting it to 1000 and we can see our counter is going till 1000 only. And we can add prefix and postfix from here. I am keeping prefix as dollar as we are making our trading dashboard. Here in the number separator, we can add a symbol by which you want to separate number as I am keeping it to here, semicolons. Now we have content base color and once you enable it, you have tons of the option where you can play around. You can enable heading conditional color base and subheading conditional color base. Continuing with this, we can set the minimum value color from here like this and in the similar way we can set the color of maximum value from here and we can see the color change that we have done and disabling the heading conditional color base the color selected will be disabled and in the similar way the subheading conditional base will also stop now leaving the counter settings we have the chart option so let's see how awesomely it works here Firstly, we have type here and we can change our graph to area, line or column. From here, we can also set the height of the chart like changing it to 80 and you can see the difference. 
Now in the stroke setting, with width we can make stroke of graph thinner or thicker like changing the value to 6 and we can see the quite thicker stroke. Then from the dash we can add a dash to the graph by changing the value in here. Let's do it. We can change the color of stroke from here like doing this. Mm -hmm. Moving forward in the curves you can change it to the straight and even to step line. I will change it back to smooth here. That's look more effect. And even change the line cap that is here, the edge shape of the dash, which can change it to square, but or round. And below that we have fill setting. We can change the style to classic, gradient or even pattern. We can change the opacity from here and you can change the color whatever you like. I am changing it to the lighter variant of the yellow so it matches my stroke. Now just carrying ahead we have the chart data. If there is no section to enter the data in the chart then using chart would be like just a dummy. So in the section you can add the data. You can add the title here and you can see that here. I am changing the value and see the variation in the chart, uh, just that. And here you can change the value and if you want to add a new item to do it, you can just do it by clicking here. That's all for the content now. Let's go to the styles. Here we have card style, counter style, title style and description style. In the car setting, first feature you get is border radius. That will make the edge of your card circular. For example, I am changing the value to 10 and you can see the change in the graph. Then we have an alignment and we can change the alignment of the item within like this. Mm -hmm. Then we have option for the border type from this drop down. Then we have an option for background and we have two options solid and gradient. And we can set the color from down here. I'm changing the color to black. Now in the counter style, we can change the typography from this drop down. And you can set the size here. Set the weight from this drop down and we have much more settings. Then you can change the font color from here. And you can change the margin and padding also according to your use and that's all for the counters and i have made the similar kind of counters in the dashboard that you can see here this is all now we will make the mix chart similar to this dashboard and it will cover most of the part for you in this video so now we will add a new structure and search for mix chart and simply drag and drop just like counters here we can see the mix chart and we have various sections that we can edit or over the left side. In the basic setting we have cards, headings and descriptions. And enabling and disabling the buttons we will turn this element on and off. When the heading is enabled you can write the heading over here like I am keeping cryptocurrency market cap. And similarly, you can add a description in the box where the description is turned on. Then we have data option and restriction option. But as we have talked about earlier, it will be covered in another video. So stay connected with us. Then we have chart options. Then chart background color. We can set the background color we are changing here. Then we have similar options just like counters to increase and decrease the height of the chart. We have one new option for the toolbar. It will be visible once you turn it on and all the options will be pop. In the toolbar, we have options like zoom in, zoom out, and you can download SVG, PNG, and CSV files. From the offset Y, you can change the position of toolbar on the Y axis, like I'm changing the value to 30, and you will just see the difference in the chart. And similarly, you can change the offset X to move the toolbar on the X axis. And I will just reset both the offset now as I need it to a default position. And here you can customize the tags that will be appear on the display when there is no data available in the chart. 
now in the label setting you can enable or disable the label we can see the labels in chart when we enable it we can get and see tons of option here we can keep it into our use firstly we have a comma separator let's take an example for that i will change one of the value from here and we can see the number is separated by the comma and we can also turn it off now i am again resetting the value as we are going to cover the that topic further then we have an option of offset and we have talked about its use earlier and we have also used prefix and postfix for the label as we have talked about in counters we have a tool tip that basically means when you will hover over the graph it will show you the value like here in the box and disabling it it will just go away you can set the theme even to dark or light as i am switching the tool tip to dark here and then again to light and then we have animation settings you can set the speed and you can see the change in the animation and in the same way we can set the delay also further we have the drop shadow settings by enabling it it will get multiple options you can set the option from the top using this and left here you can see the shadow but it looks so fake and bad so we can add blur from here like i have given value 7 and we can just see the 3d effect here in the graph and you can also add the opacity to the shadow now we will disable the shadow from here and we don't need shadow for this task then we have plot option settings for column graph we have start shape changing it to round and we can see the change on the screen it's a good and similarly for the end shape we can position the label inside the graph like we are changing it to the center this is on the bottom and on top then the next option is line cap and that is the same as we saw in the counter so i will just skip it for now then we have option of categories and changing the data here will affect the x axis i am changing data into the years for the better understanding going ahead we have legend settings enabling it you can see the legends here and we can position it using this buttons we can even set a alignment then we have x axis setting and we have various options using the tool tip we can highlight the value on the x axis as you can see on the screen as the name suggests enabling the pointer line will turn on the pointer line using labels we can hide and unhide labels on the x axis we can also set its position we can auto rotate the label and going deeper we can set how much rotation you want to give it again we have option to set offset then we have the tick amount that will use to show a limited number of data on the x axis and further we got the option of prefix and postfix too in the similar way to the counter and we have the same set of option for y axis so you guys just check it out i am skipping for it now and we will just move to element settings here it is divided into three different elements we will firstly see element 1 we will change the type to column line or area like i am changing it to area right now and you can see the changes on the screen now i am again changing it to the column for better understanding and in the field setting we can change the color gradient or pattern so you can also set the opacity of the settings and we can change the color from here and i will change the color to somewhat light blue yeah that's perfect if we change it to the gradient you can select the primary color and secondary color too and you can see the result of gradient on the page right now it looks so much good further in the gradient you can also set the value of from opacity to the opacity and we have the option to inverse color by clicking on this just button we have a stroke or drop shadow option same as we have seen in the counters and in the similar way i have same option for element 2 and element 3 so i am just fast forwarding this thing 
so it don't look like it's just getting again and again now we have the section of element 1 2 and 3 for example we are seeing element 1 right now we can set the title and then you can alter the value down in inbox and in a similar way we can make changes in element 2 and 3 also And the style section is just same as the counter so I just quickly make some changes and we will see the results. This is what we have changed. That's all for the mixed chart and this will cover the maximum chart that we have in Graphina. And if you want any detail regarding any chart you can just click here on i button and this will take you directly to the tutorials of Graphina. So I have kept all the charts that we wanted and this is how our page is currently looking. That's amazing. And now we will directly skip to the new widgets that Graphin offers, that is data tables. So firstly we have the data options and opening that we have option of show card as we have seen earlier. We have the option to choose dynamic data but we will skip just like earlier in this video. So we have the option of number of rows and we can add or remove rows from here. And you can see that on the screen. Then we have review restriction. Then we have the option for header, it will be enabled by default and disabling it will remove the header. And we have the last option of table option. The first option is for responsive that will make our table responsive. And down we have the option for search and enable it, we will get a search box where you can search the data in the table. Then in the style we can change the card as the same setting in the counter so I will just skip it for now. Now we will add some data and we can directly add data to the tables and that comes very handy while using the data tables. So we will quickly add some data that is this and you can see the results. And this is what our dashboard look like as I promised you at the beginning of this video. And you can see it looks so amazing and elegant. And this is where I end our video. I know it was a long video but it was necessary to understand the manual data in Graphina. And I am hoping it is helpful for you. And in the upcoming videos we will see how to use dynamic data options and how to fetch data from the data sources like Google Sheet, CSV file, API, SQL Builder, Firebase and much more. So stay connected with me, subscribe to my channel, like this video and share it to your friends and family so they also can get this easy course. So till then, hasta la vista.